Hi there, friends. Fantastic video today. One of my favorite soup, a tomato bisque. Stay tuned. I'm going to show you how to make it. Remember, thumbs up if you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring that bell. Stay tuned, friends. We're going to make that tomato bisque amazing. Well, hello there, friends. Today, soups. We're going to make a lot of soups, as a matter of fact. You know, like we did a, a series on sauces. We're not going to do a series on soups. Soup. I could live on soup. I love soup. And one of my favorite soup is a tomato bisque. So I'm gonna make a tomato bisque today. Very simple, my friends. This is like, uh, poo, one, two, three, and yeah, the kind of soup you make in no time at all, all right? So we're gonna make it. The first thing we got, and, and I wanted to save some time, because <laughs> you know, all my videos start the same. I gotta cook the onion, and I gotta caramelize the onion first. Well, guess what, friends? I got them caramelized already. You see, look, it takes only a few minutes, by the way, for those that are new to the channel, welcome. We'd love to have you. We've had, uh, I think, another 60 or 70,000 new subscribers in the last couple of months. So, wonderful. Welcome to everybody. Uh, we're having fun, and I'm glad you're here. So, first thing always, <laughs> all, all onion is always number first. Remember that. Don't forget now. All right, so we got him. That's it. I'm not going to say anything anymore because my regular going to say, oh, here we go again. We're going to put a little garlic in there. And you're gonna say, well, you're putting the garlic really soon. I am. I'm putting it very soon. And I'm not worried because the second I smell, which will be in a few seconds from now, I gotta put liquid on it and I'm saving this beautiful aroma. Remember, we don't brown garlic on this channel like so many people do. That's their thing. Hey, you know, they can do whatever they want. It's their garlic. Okay, they wanna burn it, they can burn it. We like a very soft, gentle garlic uh, aroma. Very, very soft. I don't like it when I have got when I have garlic and you got like like oh what did you have for lunch today I had uh, garlic and mm -hmm. uh, we want a soft gentle garlic it's more delicate so here we have it all right so I can smell the garlic already so now liquid it goes all right so we're gonna put the carrots uh, chopped carrots and celery that's some beer pot okay somebody was asking me the other day on one of the comments. Chef, why don't you use a mirepoix? Hey, I use it when, I, when, I, when it feels good to use it, meaning when, it, when it's appropriate to use it. So, you know what we're going to do here? It doesn't matter really if you cut them small or big. Just kind of try to cut them the same size because what we're going to do, friends, we're going to puree everything into a beautiful cream. So we got carrot, celery, onion. We got tomato puree. This is just a can of tomato puree, a 28-ounce can of tomato puree. I will write the recipe perfect for you, friends. So not to worry. Okay, then I got right here, tomatoes. <laughs> I got the 28 ounce uh, of uh, La Valle tomatoes. I use La Valle tomatoes, those are my favorite tomatoes. They already peeled tomato. They're like a San Marzano tomato, but they have the price. This is a big, we call it a number 10 can, and, uh, and this is three and a half can. Three and a half normal 28 ounce. So it all goes in here, very simple. Okay, this is a big recipe, but not, not really that much, you know. You know, I like to make soup. When I make a soup, I make enough so I can freeze it. We don't wanna make it just a little soup just for today, no. We wanna make a soup and we wanna eat it for a, for, for a while, so we wanna freeze it, my friends. Really, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you wanna make a soup, you wanna get enough to freeze it, okay? So. That looks like a lot, trust me, it's not. Plus, I'm gonna put some stock in here. What else are we putting in here? We're putting chopped basil, chopped basil, because basil is wonderful in it. Then we got fresh thyme. If you don't have fresh thyme, that's okay. You can also use Herb de Provence. Matter of fact, I have Herb de Provence, so I'm gonna put a little bit of Herb de Provence in there. Because Herb de Provence is wonderful, you know? They're really, really nice. There's thyme, rosemary, uh, uh, chervil, it's really, really a beautiful mix of dry herbs. If you can get them, they're wonderful. I'm also going to put a little bit of tomato paste, my friend. The paste is only like five, six ounces of tomato paste. This is going to give us a little more structure. Structure. Okay, so let's give, give us a body. Otherwise, it'll be too liquid, right? So, so far, so good, right? And then, let me not forget anything. Oh, I forgot to tell you, but I started... 
I started with the um, uh, Herbe de Provence olive oil. You can start with a roasted garlic olive oil. You can start with a, any kind of olive oil, whatever you have. I happen to have Herbe de Provence, so that's what I use. And I'm also going to use an Herbe de Provence salt. If you have it. If you don't have Herbe de Provence salt, not everybody got Herbe de Provence salt, okay? <laughs> you got to be from Provence. <laughs> So you use a, whatever salt makes you happy, okay, friends? Look, so far so good, right? So now what we have to do is we have to put some stock. So for all of you vegetarian out there, friends, uh, just use a vegetable stock. I use a chicken stock, okay? Use whatever you want. It's your soup, okay? And then we're going to put a two soup, two, two right there, right? And that's it, eight, you know, up. let me do another one. So that's a three cup of chicken stock right here. Okay, now we can always add some more because the chicken stock is already cooked. Now, remember, you saw I put quite a bit of salt in there, right? Well, that's because my, my stock is not salty because it's homemade. If you're buying a stock that is already store-bought, be careful, there's going to be a lot of salt in there, right? So be careful, you may want to adjust the salt at the end. Okay, so look, we're going to bring this to boil, and then we're going to let it cook, and then we're going to adjust thickness let around and then we'll take the immersion blender and we puree all that that's why it doesn't really matter if it's all small vegetables it just got to be the same size so they cook at the same speed i would say about an hour and 15 minutes and you bring it to boiler right and as soon as it's boiling you reduce it down to a small heat very little blue 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 so you don't like you know make a huge mess on top of your stove i like to use a bigger pot than i need so then there's no Blooping around on my stove, okay? Blooping around. That's a new word. You know, we're going to serve this with a, um, a garlic crouton. I'm going to show you how to make it. Very simple. Garlic crouton. So look, we're going to go right there. We're going to put a little bit of olive oil. I'm using my um, Herbe de Provence olive oil, but you could use a garlic olive oil, right? And then I got my garlic puree. You know the garlic puree that I make? You, you make it and you put it in the freezer. And also, you know what we're going to do? At the end, we're going to serve the soup with, um, we're gonna put a little cream. I, I have a heavy whipping cream in here that I'm ready to go, right? And then we're gonna put some pesto in there. Uh, just to decorate the plate, it'll be kinda nice, right? So, so we're gonna put a little bit of garlic in here. We're not gonna burn it. We're just gonna put it in here for fragrance. And if you've, if you've never seen this uh, garlic video, you should check it out, folks. It's a video on how to make garlic like this and how to freeze it. So you make your puree and then you freeze it. It's olive oil and garlic. That's all it is, really. It's a garlic puree, right? We're going to get this hot, and we're going to put a little bit of chopped parsley. And as soon as it's hot, this is the easiest way in the world, my friends, to make crouton. Really simple, huh? If you've never made crouton before, you got to give yourself a... you got to do it, my friend. It's really, really wonderful. So we got a little bit of olive oil. And you know what we like to do in this channel? <laughs> friends, we always have it ready to go. It's a little bit of butter. It's a little cold this morning. There you go. Put a little more here. There you go. Jean-Pierre, put a little more guy. You know, you can never have too much butter, right, friends? Somebody gonna say, you know, I like your oh, I like your food, chef, but it's a little too much butter. <laughs> go next door, okay? They gotta they gotta use less butter next door. So look, right? There's a little bit of butter right there, a little more olive oil. A child could do this. This is uh, country bread. Country bread. You know, I buy the whole loaf, and you know it's easier to do, friends, is you, you take it and you remove the crust because it makes it more easy crouton, right? And then you, you freeze it a little bit so it makes it easier to cut, right? And then look, look. Turn the heat off because we don't want to burn the garlic, right? And look, look, look. A child could do this, not with a spoon. A child would need a... a, a, a um, there you go. A child would need one of those. i tell you why we need it. We need both of them. There you go. Sheesh. <laughs> so here you go, my friend. Look, look, look. This is very simple. Let eh, to make your crouton. Cut the bread, put a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of butter, a little bit of garlic, a little bit of chopped parsley, and you got yourself some amazing crouton, my friend. Mix them up. Look, there shouldn't be nothing left in a fry pan. Voila. You take this, right? Chopped parsley, chopped basil, whatever you want. You put them on a cookie sheet. I got mine lined with a, uh, a seal pad. This is great. If you have never used a seal pad before, folks, you can cook fish, you can cook meat, you can cook anything on those things. Seal pad, silicone mat. It's perfectly safe up to 500 degrees. Silicone is great. Look, take it right there, pop it in a 375 degree oven, my friends. And very simply, we're going to cook that soup now. I mean, really, 
a child could do this, right? This is really not simple. Bring it to boiler. We'll come back in about an hour and a half when it's finished, and we're going to finish it up. We're going to plate it, and we're going to put a little pesto, a little bit of cream. We're going to make a nice, smooth, creamy tomato bisque. We'll be back as soon as it's done. Okay, friends. It's been cooking for a good hour and a half, and, uh, and now we're ready to finish it. So I want you to look at the inside of this pot and, uh, and look at it. It is very thick. Well, that's a good problem to have. I'd rather be too thick than too thin. If I'm too thin, then I got to put a thickener in there. And I don't like putting a thickener if I don't have to. Okay, look. See, right there? So now, let's test it. Let's get, let's, um, oh, it's going to be hot. Okay. So, need salt. Let's do that. That's going to, for sure, that's number one. I certainly could use some pepper as well. No, we're not going to put the coarse one. We're gonna put the fine, the finer one in there, right? So, so salt and pepper, and and that's easy to fix, right? That's okay. But now, let's talk about the texture. Uh, well, let's talk about many things. First of all, it's uh, it's a little acid, as it happens often. Even if we use great tomato, it's still gonna be a little acid. So we will deal with this late in, after we have dealt with the texture. Okay, so. Too thick, maybe, we're gonna find out. We're not gonna do anything until we put the emulsion blender in there and, and we puree the whole thing. If it's too thick, this is why you got a stock right here, a vegetable stock or a chicken stock to come at your rescue. And don't forget, we also, friends, we're also gonna put some cream in there. Cream is thick though, so I'm not too worried about it. So let's puree, so we can use this Emotion blender right there, that'll work. But you know, I got my special uh, 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 soup top you need over there. So I'm gonna put this in there, cause it'll go a lot faster. And uh, yeah, we're gonna do this. This is gonna do this in no time at all, friends. You see, look. Okay, we're not finished. We're gonna take it out of there for a minute, but we're not quite finished with this. Okay, so let's put it out for a minute. So now, this is the cool part, because uh, if it's too thick, really easy to fix. So it's a little too thick, right? So let's put the cream first, because I know we need the cream for certain, right? And what is the cream gonna do? Oh, it's gonna do two things. One. Number one, the cream is gonna deal, it's gonna help us with the texture. Number two, cream is made out of what? So a lot of fat in there, 32, 38%, 42% fat, depends on the cream you're buying. I think I'm using a 38% today. So the fat is gonna do what? When you have acidity in food, friends, when you have acidity in food, uh, let's say you're making a lemonade to bring it back to normal lemonade. What choice do you have with the lemonade? You can put sugar, right? Or if you have a lemon sauce, what are you gonna do? You're not gonna put sugar, what are you gonna put? You're gonna put butter, because fats upset acidity, the same way sugar does. So, I got a tomato sauce in here. I can do fat, which is what I did. I could also do a little sweet. So you know what I like to do? I like to use acacia honey. I don't know if you've ever had acacia honey, if you don't have acacia honey, just use sugar. A little bit of sugar. Sugar helps you upset acidity the same way fat does. So now we're gonna put both of them in there. Why do I use acacia honey? Acacia honey is so delicate, it's so, it's transparent. You'll never know it's in there. It won't leave any um, sugar residue like normal honey would do. A normal honey would do, there's nothing wrong with it, but it just leaves a sugar residue that I do not like. I like my uh, uh, sweetness to be, ooh, that's hot, to be transparent. So you don't really know it's in there. All right, so so far we're looking a little better. We got a little fat in there. We got a little sweet in there. Don't put too much. Just put whatever you think you need. At the end of the day, there's nobody else to please but you. So when you test it, you have to say to yourself, is it acid? Okay, and if it's still acid, 
Oh, so much better. Wow. It's like I wish you were here and you could test it. You would not believe it. It's amazing, the difference. So now we still have an issue, I think. It's still a little too thick. So I'm going to put a little bit of stock. So I think I started with three cups. I'll have to look later to fix the, video, the, the recipe. But I think I started with three cups. So now I'm up to four cups. I think that's what I started with. Okay, but we'll see. So now we see we're starting to look a lot better, my friends. We're starting to look a lot better. And now, how thick do you want it? It's really up to you. This is, there's no right or wrong here. Again, I, I'm, for me, well, for me, of course it's for me. I'm making it. I think it's still a little too thick. So we're going to put one more. So I think the total is going to be five at this point. Five cups. This is one cup. This is a, an eight ounce ladle. So it's one cup. Let me just make sure. Yeah, yeah, it's an eight ounce ladle. Certainly sure looks like it. You know, sometimes I wonder about me. 50 years in the kitchen and you would think that I would know that's a 12 ounce ladle, not an eight ounce ladle. <laughs> All right, so we'll have to figure out a recipe exactly. So that's a three, no, so that's five, that's a 60 ounce of stock. Okay, and to me, this is perfect. I love it just like this, my friend. So we can, one thing we could do, one more thing we could do, a little bit. I think, I, I'm gonna test it again, but I think it's perfect. I think by now, my friend, it's like so amazing. It's so hot. Um, I think we need to make it a little smoother. So let me use this guy and see if I can make it just a little smoother. I like a very, very smooth texture, my friends. Texture, remember, the texture is a conductor of flavor. And here's a perfect proof of it. You know what, I'm gonna put just, just a little bit more of stock. Okay, so that's one more. Whew, that's a, but you know, my stock is beautiful. That's, that's the beauty. That's the beauty about having a too thick because you can do that. And the stock doesn't need to cook. It's not like a, oh, I gotta cook my soup another two hours. No, stock is already cooked. You see, look, look at this, friends. And this is looking beautiful. All right, my friend, this is it. I think we got it. Okay, so remember, play with it. Have fun with it. It's only cooking, friends. I'm gonna test one more time, right? To make sure I got it right? I think I do. So, so remember, so look for salt and pepper and try to do, huh. mm. Mm. try to do me a favor, friends. Um, adjust seasoning first. Make sure you got the right salt and pepper. Okay, then you're good with that. Then look for acidity. Don't try to do it all at once. Because if you try to do and if you don't do it at once, it's too confusing. You can't concentrate on all of it at once. Look, I've been doing this my whole life and I still do one at a time. So first salt and pepper. Okay, that's it. Oh, you good? Okay, you're good to go. Now, acidity. I don't know if there's acidity. Well, think of lemon. Think of anything that is really acid, vinegars and all that, and test it. You'll see your test buds are going to be like, ooh, if it's acid, you'll know. You know, when you eat lemon, you'll know, right? Well, when you eat a tomato, it's too acid, you'll know too. So then that's when you need fat or sweet. It's really simple. All right? And the thickness, up to you, my friends. Okay? So now what do we do? We're going to get ourselves a bowl. All right? And at this point, you make it as thin or as thick as you want. I'm going to put a bowl right here. And I'm going to put a little pesto. I like a little pesto in there. So that's a big bowl. <laughs> Last time I was using a too small of a bowl, and buddy was like, what kind of a serving is that? I got a little bit of pesto that I put in a squeeze bottle. Just pesto, and I put some oil in there. So what we're going to do, we're going to put just a little dot right there. See? Just a little dot of pesto. Of course, it's going to get stuck. Okay. Huh. I should have taken one with a little bit bigger hole so I could make nicer. Ay, mamma mia. A piece of uh, basil is probably stuck in there, you see? Okay, so you get the idea, right, friends? Right? And then I got the crouton. The croutons are amazing. So let's make it delicate. Let's, uh, you know, instead of just throwing things in there, friends, let's make it a little delicate. Right? Oh, a little too small of a crouton, but that's okay. You got the idea, right? Then you can take also, if you want, a little creme fraiche or a little sour cream and put it right in the middle, and it'll be a beautiful plate. This is it, my friends. I tested already 16 times, so I know it's delicious. 
I hope you make it. Remember, thumbs up if you like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And by all means, be a subscriber to the channel. Is that what I just said? I just finished saying that, right? I repeat it twice. Ring the bell. Thumbs up. Thank you for watching. We look forward to seeing you real soon with another fantastic video.